Amen. Talk to me when you come on in. Amen. Amen. Bless God. Amen. Good evening, Sister Tanya. How you doing? How you doing? Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, everybody. Make sure you drop something in the chat when you come on in. Good evening, Dr. Yvette. How are you doing? Go ahead and speak to your fellow citizens when you come on in. I'm going to go ahead and get started here soon. Amen. Sister Dolores, good evening. Evening, good evening, Sister Adam, Sister Helen. Welcome, welcome this evening. I pray everyone had a great day. Absolutely, Sister Helen. The folk song said, Come on in the room. I'm not going to sing. <laughs> Y'all come on in the room. Elder Leonard. Amen. Amen. Thank you for speaking to everyone as you come in. Amen. Good evening, Sister Selma. Amen. While we have the opportunity, we want to thank God, Sister Della. Amen. Thank God for you. Apostle Porter, thank God for you. While we have the opportunity, um, uh, good, good evening, uh, Sister Janelle Sampson. Hey. <laughs> um, Good evening. Uh, um, while we have the opportunity, we want to make sure that we um, take a moment and bless God for um, the man and woman of God that we have here at Kingdom Life Cathedral. Um, we want to make sure that we honor um, the angels of this house for their prayer, for their time in the word, for their uh, uh, for their time uh, um, with us, uh, breaking bread with us, uh, praying over us, helping us in every way, in every way they can. We want to make sure that we honor the man and woman of God. Um, Pastoring does not begin or end um, in the pulpit. Amen. So we want to make sure that uh, that we give honor to um, what honor is due. So um, while we're waiting for the next few minutes, we want to bless God for um, um, Apostle Porter and Dr. Yvette Porter. And we cannot forget our um, our overseer, um, executive pastor, uh, you know, Pastor John Eric Rollins. We, he does an amazing job. We want to give honor to him as well. And while we're giving honor to them, we want to make sure we bless God for you. Bless God for you, for each and every last one of you. Um, so bless God for yourself. Um, God has been good to you as well. So thank God for you. Amen. Amen. 703. So uh, we're going to go ahead and open up with prayer right now. Oh, gracious and most holy God, we give you honor now. We thank you for everything before we ask you for anything. You are the wise and all-knowing God, and we say thank you, God. Every time we think, we thank. Every time we think of your goodness, we thank you for your for your goodness. Every time we think think of your power, we thank you for your power. Every time we think of the ways you made, we thank you for those things and we give you glory now. We ask you now, Lord God, to let the words of our mouths and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. You are our Lord and our strength and our redeemer. So we say thank you, God, in Jesus name. Amen. Amen and amen. Amen. I thank God for everyone that's coming on and everybody that's already on. Uh, so we want to bless God. Thank God for all of our Kingdom Life um, citizens that are on. We thank God for all of those um, that join us with, um, from our um, Second Diocese, all the um, Second Diocese members, and all those that are joining us from King's Apostle. 
Um, so um, bless God for you uh, for joining us tonight. We pray that the word of God touches you in a way that you're able to take something away and be blessed with it. Amen. Amen. Um, so last week we only got six verses. Um, we want to do a little bit better this week, um, but we're not going to rush it, but we're going to make sure we do a little bit better this week. Amen. Um, preferably, if you can hear me clearly, make sure that you let me know. I want to make sure that I'm not speaking too low. If I need to speak up or move closer, I can do that. Um, so we're going to start right now at verse 7. We are in Proverbs 12 and 7. Proverbs 12 and 7. Um, um, we ended up, we, we ended last week with, um, well, with um, speaking about um, the wicked and, um, and 12 and 6. Thank you, um, Apostle Porter. Um, and 12 and 6. And so we want to make sure that uh, um, just as a quick recap, um, 12, um, 12 and 6 said, The words of the wicked are to lie in wait for blood, but the mouth of the upright shall deliver them. Um, this is the King James Version. Amen. So if anybody is following along, this is the King James Version. We ended with the wicked people. Um, wicked people lie in wait to destroy someone else for their um, for their selfish gain. False accusations many times cause a person to, um, to kill someone. Um, not always um, physically, but we can kill with our words too. Amen. Um, false, false, false accusations many times cause a person to kill someone who is totally innocent. Um, we oftentimes do this um, based on personal preference or, or past traumas that we have hidden that we have not addressed ourselves. And so anytime somebody touches those areas, we lash out from, uh, from that place of trauma. Um, and so the wise person does not do that. The wise person doesn't, doesn't respond in that way. The wise person or the upright speaks words of life and not death. Amen. So we want to make that declaration even now. I will speak life and not death. Amen. Proverbs 12 and 7. Tribulation comes to all. I'm sorry. Um, the wicked are overthrown and are, not, um, and are not, but the house of the righteous shall stand. The wicked are overthrown and are not, but the house of the righteous shall stand. Tribulation comes to all. But the wicked cannot stand up to trials because they have no source of strength. That source is Jesus to rely on. A righteous person will stand firm in adversity, knowing that God will see him through. The rewards of wise living are not only to individuals, but extend to one's household and or family. Amen. So. Um, um, that right there is, is, a, is a good place just to bless God. The rewards of wise living is not just for, um, for us that choose to live um, to, that choose to live wise, but it also spills over to our family and everything connected to us. That's a good place to bless God and say amen. I mean and even even right there when we think about that it said that the wicked um, cannot stand up to trials. Because they have no source of strength. They don't have roots. They don't have anything that's holding them up. But the righteous roots run deep. We spoke about that last week. Let's move on. Proverbs 12 and 8 says, A man shall, shall be condemned according to, his um, um, yeah, according to his wisdom. But he that is perverse, um, but he that is of a perverse heart shall be despised. I'm sorry, commended. I'm sorry. Um, if you know not to sin and go ahead and sin anyway, you are guiltier than someone who sins not knowing that, um, that it is sin. Now I'll say that again because I've been guilty of this before. If you know not to sin and go ahead and do it anyway, you are guiltier than someone who, um, who knows not to sin but then operates in sin. There has been much said in our society today about perversion. Perversion of any kind is terrible. But when it becomes a way of life, when it becomes a way of life with you, it is a perversion of the heart. He that truly has a perverted heart will be despised. Perversion has to do with unnatural sexual desires, 
or extreme or, or in an extreme um, um, extent of sin. Um, we oftentimes only look at perversion from a sexual standpoint, but perversion goes far deeper than that. Before that act ever happens, it was already conceived in your heart. Amen. And so what we don't want to do is is uh, uh, is, is is put the word in, um, in such a place in our lives that, that we make it to none effect. Because um, as the word tells us, shall, um, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. For those of us that know to do better, let's do better. Verse 9. He that is despised and hath a servant is better than he that um, that honoreth himself and lacketh bread. This this is good. The scripture um, the this scripture is saying um, that um, the despised is um, is really saying lightly esteemed, an obscure person of low of, of low rank. Who can, um, who can at least afford to hire a servant because of his honest gain? We want to keep in mind, because of his honest gain. The second person is someone who has nothing, um, who has nothing to be proud of, and yet is bragging about himself all the time. He is so downtrodden that he can't even feed himself, and yet he is a, he is a braggart. He, is, he constantly tells everyone how wonderful he is, at least... The first man was not dependent on someone else to provide his food. He is considered better than better than the one who falsely boasts about his prominence, but um, but is um, but is really poor. That right there um, is a, in a nutshell. We don't we sh we we shouldn't boast in anything other than um, outside of God Himself. Um, the script the scripture was really plain. It was plain and simple. But um, the one who has um, the, the one who had a servant, at least he had enough to provide for somebody else. But the one who was perpetrating a fraud, he was um, he was putting on, trying to look good and not be good. Um, we see that in, our, um, in, in many people's spiritual life, um, where they're on the outside, they, they are whitewashed sepulchers, but on the inside, they're full of dead men's bones. We are not going to be those people. It won't be named among us that we will that we will um, on Sunday mornings and Wednesday evenings that we'll or whenever the church doors are open that we come in and we are um, speaking in tongues and preaching and singing and praising and then the rest of the week we're hellions. That's not that's not that cannot be named among us. Now we now we are not going to be perfect. If we live as long as we live in this flesh, we will err. But we will not devise, we will not sit, sit and wait to devise um, deceitful acts and sinful acts. Amen. Our goal is to live a righteous and upstanding life. So let's move on. We have a lot to cover and it's so much good. It's so good. I promise you, um, I'm already on, on pace to get past what we got last week. <laughs> let's see here. I have moved my notes. My God. I apologize. There we go. We were at verse 9. Verse 10, I'm sorry. A righteous man regardeth the life of, of his beast, and, and, um, but the um, tender mercies of the wicked are cruel. What we want to look at here, um, we want to look here, um, we think back to um, Adam and Eve. Um, Adam was given um, dominion over all the beasts of the field, all the fowls of the air, all the fish of the sea. He was even able to name all of those things. Um, God gave him the ability to name all those things. So we can't assume that, um, that just because that we are created in God's image and his likeness that we can handle the rest of his creation haphazardly. We can't handle the rest of God's creation recklessly. Um, we have a responsibility to handle the creation of God and all of the earth um, with respect and honor and dignity. We have a responsibility to do that. If we are walking as God walks, that's the least, that, that's the very least we could do. Amen. Now, while we're not going to get into the conversation that some may say that, oh, you, you, uh, well, we shouldn't eat meat or uh, you should only eat plants and, and this, that, and the other. We're not even going to um, get into that tonight. That's for another time, another discussion. But for those of you that um, are vegan, bless God for you. Um, 
I will have my steak and eat it too. Amen. Uh, verse 12, 11. He that tilleth his land shall be satisfied with bread. But he that followeth vain persons is void of understanding. He that followeth vain persons is void of understanding. Someone who works his fields with his hands shall not go hungry. But someone who does not want to work and is always looking for shortcuts to take. He is at the, um, um, he is, I'm sorry, um, is, is he that expends energy in worthless pursuits and fantasies, which, which is youth, which is as useless as outright laziness. So what we don't do, we don't, we don't wish we have faith. We believe um, but we also know that faith without works is dead. I can't just pray, Lord, I, I, I'm in need of a job. I need you to bless me with a job. I need you to drop that job right on my doorstep. I'm not leaving this bed until you bless me with a job. Now, our God is, 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 is all powerful. He can do that. He absolutely can. But we need our faith. Have, our feet have to match our faith. We have to get up and do something. The same way I'm believing that God is going to give me that job, I certainly have to go ahead and apply for the job. And I'm not just talking about the job that I, um, the job that I know I can get. God has some jobs. He has some. He has some areas. Um, he has some areas in life. God has some business plans for us. He has some land set for us that man said we are not qualified for. But I hear the Spirit saying even now, it's yours for the asking. It's yours for the taking. He, you, you have not because you ask not. The moment that we, the, the moment that we, that, that we, that we take God at his word and say, you know what, since I am your child and I, and I have access to heaven, I have access to the kingdom. I have access to the father. I look, walk, smell, and talk like my daddy. When I walk in the room, you know who he is and you know who I am because I look like him. I smell like him. I, 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 I walk in, I walk with, 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 with his, I walk with his swag as, as our apostle would say. My, I got my daddy's swag when I when I walk in the room. You know who it is when I when I step in the building, amen. So I'm not going to downplay I'm downplay I'm downplay who I am because of who they think they are. That's it right there. I'm not going to downplay who I am for who man has has exalted himself to be because Scripture just told us that that's who the right that's that that's what the uh, what the, what the uh, uh, the vain person or the sin the, the sinful person would do, but the righteous man. We don't have to boast or brag to who we are because we already know who we are. But I'm not going to dim my light to make them feel like, feel like theirs is brighter. And we have to make sure that if, if that business is yours, go get it. That job is waiting for you. You may not have the, the, um, the, you may not have the qualifications that they're asking for on paper, but you have the faith that they need in that office. You have the, you, 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 you have the, the attention to detail that they need in that business. That land that's out there that, that's left unclaimed, it's it's ours. It's waiting for us to step out on faith and go and get it. But amen. Before I go too far, let me pull back. I'm about to get fill up, get on my glad glads. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Verse twelve. Um, the wicked desire of the um desire of the net of evil of evil men, but the root of righteousness yieldeth fruit. The wicked desire um, desires the, uh, uh, um, the 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 finance or the or the money um, or um, desires the the money referring to the the, um, the desires of spoils gained by the schemes of the wicked. In contrast with the um, with the simple life of obedience that produces blessings, we see um, we see this in, um, in the scriptures. The righteous produce fruit pleasing unto God. And scripture tells us that a workman who needeth not be um, to be ashamed is a righteous person. Amen. Amen. We don't have to desire the riches of um, the riches of um, of, of evil doers. Um, I wrote down something earlier that uh, um, it is in the nature of the wicked to cover what others um, to covet what others have, even if it is the catch of evil men. In this, um, in this, they sin in the covetedness and the um, and the longing for what has been gained by evil men. The root of righteousness yields fruit. 
God's righteous men, um, righteous men and women don't need to cover, to covet, to, ca um, to covet the catch of evil men because they are like fruit bearing trees themselves. Fruit comes from our very roots. It comes from who, uh, from who we are, uh, from who we are at the heart of who we are. Fruit comes from our very roots. People of God, we need to hear that. We don't have to be consumed or concerned about what what on um, what the world is getting or what the world is gaining. Fruit fruit that is righteous, fruit that is pleasing to God, it comes from it sprouts up from our very roots. So our primary focus now is to make sure that we stay connected to the vine. We have to make sure we stay connected. But if we stay connected, we can do nothing but bear fruit. We have to bear fruit. Amen. Verse 13. The wicked is um, the wicked is snared by the transgression of his lips. But the just shall come out of trouble. Transgression of the lips would be um, would be lies. Transgression of the lips would be considered lies here um, for the next few verses. Um. As we move forward, um, verses uh, uh, to summarize some of it, verses five through eleven, we're going to really be talking about um, like wickedness and righteousness again. Uh, when we get to like uh, seventeen through twenty-two, we're going to be talking about um, lies and um, and and a lying tongue. So right now we're at um, we're we're at verse thirteen, and we're start, we're starting to open up as to what, um, not so much as what we say, but how we how we say it from our hearts. Um, so transgression of the lips would be lies. When you tell a lie, it usually calls calls for another for another lie to cover up the first. And pretty soon the liar is trapped because they cannot remember all the lies and keep them straight. The just person just tells the truth. There is no problem for this um, for this person to remember. They just tell the facts and the truth wins out every time. The just have to um, have to advocate. With the Father, with the Father Jesus Christ, the um, the righteous one. When you're telling the truth, you don't have you don't have nothing. You you have nothing else to remember but the truth. The truth is always it's always going to talk for itself. But when you start telling lies, it's hard. It is difficult to, to to try to remember the lie that you told, why you told that lie. Then you have to tell another lie to to cover up that lie because it has holes in it. Um, I don't know if anybody else has been there, but I tried that before. It stinks. It is not profitable. It is stressful. Man, just tell the truth. It is so. It is so much easier. <laughs> it is so much easier. We could just. Uh, we could just. Uh, uh, just. 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 Just put it out there plain. Just tell the truth. If you don't have truth to say, then be quiet. Just be quiet. I tell my children all the time. Your words carry weight. That's right. Um, that's right, Elder Jadour, Pastor, um, Pastor Jewel, um, um, Jador, I'm sorry. Um, you don't have to, um, you don't have to, uh, uh, um, um, mix. Um, uh, you don't have to um, um, mix words. Um, because the truth prevails. I tell my children all the time: your words carry weight. You don't, and, and because your words carry weight, when you speak, you're not speaking to fill an empty space. If there is no truth to be said, keep your mouth shut, because what you say will be remembered. Just because of who you are, as citizens of the kingdom, every word that we speak out of our mouth will be remembered. It carries weight. It does. It does either. It either builds or tear or tears down in some way or shape, shape, form, or capacity. We want our words to tear down the kingdom of darkness and build up the truth of God in every area of life. Amen. Verse fourteen. A man shall be satisfied with good by the fruit of his mouth and the recompense of, um, um, of a man's hands shall be rendered unto him. We see here that speaking can produce fruit. We were just talking about that. Speaking can produce fruit. A minister who, tell, um, who tells others about Jesus can produce much fruit for God with words that, um, that, come, from, um, words that come from his or her mouth. First Corinthians um, one and twenty one says, "For after um, for after that, in the wisdom of um, of God, the world by wisdom knew knew not knew not God. It pleased God by 
by the foolishness of, of preaching to, to save them that believe. The fruit of his mouth deals with the power of words. The reward of wise words is like the reward um, of, um, for physical labor. You see, preaching produces fruit for the kingdom of God. The last part of this verse we see that the, the recompense of um, the recompense or rewards comes from from men and women of God working with their hands. So we see that 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 the reward that we're talking about is um, is like um, that deals with um, uh, the reward from our words is like the reward from physical labor. So when we speak the truth of God, when we speak well, well of God, when we speak tr um, good, good and righteous things. Now, when you know when you when you've done something good, when you've got finished cleaning up your house, that good feeling that you have. I know everybody on here loves to come home to a clean home. When your house is clean, just feels like your life is clean. You don't, you just kind of breathe a, you can just exhale, breathe a sigh of relief. But if your house is messy, it's like everything, you just irritated for no reason at all. You get in your car and your car is messy, you just mad for no reason at all. Well, you have a reason because you need to clean your car uh, or you need to clean your house. Uh, but we ain't talking about straightening up either. We talking about how, um, uh, how Apostle said, Grandma, Say it's time to clean. We we're not gonna straighten. We're gonna get down in there. We're gonna clean today. And so while we're cleaning ourselves in the word, um, while we're walking through Proverbs, we want to make sure um, that we don't have those areas in our life that that leaves us feeling frustrated, so that we can have that that um that that good feeling that we can we can grab grab hold of that reward. I know that I've just done something well. Um, because um, the fruit that, I'm there, that is produced from my good speaking, the fruit that, that is produced from my wise words, somebody else, somebody else's life is saved. Somebody else, somebody else is, 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 is potentially pulled out of a dark place, out of a pit, because we have made sure that we cleaned our heart, that we cleaned our mind, and that the, and our, and the words of our mouths are a result of those, of those clean things. I tell you, I did something the other day um, while I was um, while I went to the gym, I was looking at some workout videos, and um, some of the videos had some music on, and it was kind of late at night, so it was probably like uh, 11 uh, 11 o'clock, so um, it's close to midnight. I'm listening, um, I'm watching the, um, the videos um, while, I'm, while I'm getting my workout plan together, and the, while the music is playing, unbeknownst to me, I'm listening to the music, but I'm focused on the actual workouts, and again, it's late at night. I'm focused on the workouts. I get my workout in and I have other music playing while I'm working out. But then I go back to that, to those videos to see, make sure I did the workouts right. I got home, cleaned up and everything. While I was sleeping, I wasn't, I didn't hear the music that I was playing while I was working out. I heard the music that was playing from the original, from the original video. All night long, I hear Whitney Houston. I hear Usher. I hear all these different songs playing. But I haven't listened to these. I haven't listened to this music. This music is playing in my mind all night long. I wake up in the morning. Um, I, I habitually play um, play worship music every morning. I want to start my day with worship. Those the songs that was on those videos was playing. It was being rehearsed in my in my mind. And I and just just from being a, a music person, I couldn't get it out of my head. And I had to make myself. I had to put, I had to force myself, I had to force something else in my head to make sure that I didn't mistakenly sing or speak something that was unbecoming of, 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 a, child, of a child of God. And some people say, oh, there's no issue with music. Um, work out your own soul salvation with fear and trembling. For me, <laughs> I know what works for me and what doesn't work for me. There is some music that's not going to work for me and that was, and, and that was it. It was digging in my brain. It was digging in my. It was. It was. It was irritating my soul because it wasn't only just the just the music. It the music had a time attached to it, and so it took me. It took parts of my mind back to another season, and I couldn't allow that. So what did I have to do? I had to say, okay, reset, refocus, Wesley. I had to deliberately put. I had to deliberately force God's word back into back into my into my mind. Because when we don't, when we don't feed our heart and feed our mind, feed our soul with the word of God, with the power of God, or, or feed our heart with the power of God, that word is choked out in our hearts. And so what we don't want to do is have the word of God to, um, to end up being to non-effect and we operate in a ritualistic way 
like like the Sadducees or the Pharisees did in their time where we are more law abiding versus law abiding. And I hope that makes sense where we just deal with more of the law than actually following and doing what God says. So, amen. So, um, verse 15, we're going to move. The way of the fool is right in his own eyes. Yes, we get good here. The way of the fool is right in his own eyes. But he that hearkeneth unto counsel is wise. He that listens or he that heeds good counsel is wise. We discussed before that a fool is lacking in understanding. Second Timothy um, um, 3 and 2 says, For men shall be lovers of, um, of their own selves, covetous, boasters, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. This is, a, um, um, this is describing self-centered people who will not listen to good counsel. But think the um, but think the world revolves around them. I know somebody on here knows somebody like that. Um, if it ain't you, don't say nothing. You say amen or say ouch. Either way, um, I'll say say amen or say ouch too if it's you. Bless God. We know somebody like that that thinks the world revolves around them. We are told in Second Timothy that this will be the condition of the people of the world. In the end times, um, before um, before Lucifer, Lucifer at that time, when he was cast out of heaven, he had that attitude. He had that attitude in heaven, and God threw him out. We know um, secular world um, teaches that many um, or many modern teachers in the secular world, um, um, is, and even in some churches, teach that um, teach that man can become God. And we hear people, um, there are some, some different churches out there where every time they, people speak to you, they call you a God. And they believe that they are God. And that's right, uh, um, brother, um, brother Matthew, he's a hidden, hidden agendas. Um, and when people call themselves a God, they believe that they are gods. They believe that they are kings and all of, this, all of these things. Um, and so they have exalted themselves and put themselves on pedestals and, on, and, on, and exalted themselves and placed their own, their own thrones um, and 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 their and, and uh, or place themselves in the throne of their own mind and their own heart, and so there's no room for God. Uh, but uh, the psalmist Jonathan McReynolds um, said, um, "I'm going to make room for you. I'm not, I don't care what nobody else is going to do, but I am personally going to make room for God." Amen. Amen. So, uh, so from the verses, uh, like I said, verses um, 16 to 22, it talks a little bit about. Truth and lies, and uh, we're gonna um, go over. Um, one of the one of the writers said this. Remember that James says about um, says about the tongue. It is a restless evil, full of deadly poison. I think that's James three and um, um, three and eight. This is the principle. Um, um, this is the principle that work behind the fool's displeasure. When he speaks, when he speaks rashly, it's it's a reminder that when we are quick to speak, often out of anger, good results rarely follow. We must engage our minds before we speak. I know many times I have been guilty of of speaking out of anger, and I can never rem remember a time when I lashed out and I spoke out of anger. And something fruitful was produced. Even if what I was saying was true. Even if what we say as believers are true. Everything we say has to be said in love. Everything we do has to be done in love. When we go back to, um, to verse 1. And, um, and here, um, here in, uh, in, um, in chapter 12. When we're talking about a fool dis um, despises correction. A, wi a wise man accepts it and, 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 and honors it and, and takes heed to it. We have to make we have to make sure that we are that we are um, are able to to stomach or eat even the the um the words that we're giving that we're giving um to people. I can't tell my children to be wise with your words and to and um and 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 to uh, um to not be um to not be brash or to not be um harsh, speak harshly um to people to not speak out of anger because once you say something you can't take those words back. You can say sorry. But oftentimes the damage is done the moment you release those words. Even if you have to be silent for a season, 
do your best. Do your best. Do your due diligence to, um, to, to be silent and, and, and let the word of God sp um, speak for you. Because the moment that we that we speak from our flesh, the moment that we speak then, because we always feel like I could say this another way. Uh, <laughs> I could say I could really say this another way. We always have we all have those those people that know how to push those buttons um, and they know how to get a, 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 an ungodly reaction from us. Um, but what we have to do, we have to make sure that uh, um, that we bridle our tongues. This tongue is a small member in our bodies, but my God, it can cause years of damage. It can cause years of damage. I remember words that were spoken to me and over my life when I was when I was just like good Lord as young as my, my youngest son seven or eight years old I remember them like as loud and as clear as they were spoken on this day we have to be wise about the words that we, that we let, out our, let out of our mouths amen 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 um, of all the sins involving our speech lying is one of the most um, disastrous the wicked, um, the wicked have deceit in their hearts. This is twelve, and um, um, this is going to be. This is going to reference verse twelve and twenty. And inevitably, deceit escapes the um, escapes the heart, or escapes their heart through uh, through a mouth that tells lies. But lying lips are are de, um, are are dis, are are, dis, are detestable um, to the Lord. They're detestable to the Lord. When when he prayed to the Father. Jesus said, your word is truth. That's John 17 and 17. He told his disciples, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Now, John 14 and 6. Lying then is contrary to God's own character and behavior. I'm going to say that again. Lying is therefore contrary to God's own character and behavior. Therefore, let faithfulness fill our hearts and truth will come out of your mouth because truthful, because truthful lips endure forever. My God, that was that was a mouthful all by itself. That was a mouthful all by itself. And again, I said I was um, that was we're going to um, that was really covering a lot of from 17 to 22. I'm going to read verse 18 real quick and then we're going to go ahead and jump down to verse 23. Um. Um, one of the um, one of the uh, notes I have of verse eighteen says there um, that there is um, there is that speaking like piercing of a of a sword, but the tongue of the wise is health. The tongue of the wise is health, but the uh, but the contrary to the wise tongue is like the piercing of a sword. So we have to be mindful, and I wanted to make sure I hot um, that um, that we highlighted though um that particular verse um. Again, um, as we speak about um, 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 in, a, in, a, in my secular in the secular job, we speak about emotional intelligence. Um, I believe that we have to have spiritual intelligence in this um, in this regard, and and that spiritual spiritual intelligence, um, I would even call it soul intelligence. Um, well, I well, well, I command my soul, not not only as the song says to bless the Lord, but I command my soul to come under the subjection and the authority of God. So when so so when when my emotions want to take control, when my emotions want to run rampant, when my emotions want to go haywire, I have to com command those things to come under the authority of God, so that I speak what He speaks. I I I, I think what well, I think how He thinks. I believe how I believe what He calls for me to believe. I I I walk how, how He calls me to walk, and I don't do the things that would please my flesh for a season, but I walk in the way of God. Even if it's uncomfortable, even if it's uncomfortable, growth is uncomfortable. Sometimes there are situations or circumstances that come across our that, um, that come across our path, um, especially in the um, in, in, in this cantankerous world that we live in right now, where so many people are so are so enraged and so entitled and so filled with themselves. That they they seek out anger. They 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 seek to hurt people. They seek to do um, deceitful acts and and they seek to do ungodly things. And they look to the people of God for an answer. And oftentimes, in an unfair from an unfair view, they look to the people of God. To, uh, many people look at the people of God to be perfect. 
to be without sin, to be without fault, forgetting that we're people, to, we're, we are human too. We are in this flesh just like the next person. If not for the grace of God, there go I. I could fall just, just like the next man. But because of my roots, even if I fall, I have the ability to get back up. Our job is, God, please keep me from keep me from falling. Keep my feet from slipping. I could I, we all we all could slip at any moment. But we have to make sure that we keep our eyes on Jesus. And when, when we say slip, we don't want to say that, oh, I just walked outside and I and and, and I fell in and I fell into sin. Um, no, nine times out of ten, you thought about that. Um, the action um, happened, from, happened from a thought, uh, from a seed that the enemy planted. We have to uproot those seeds and make sure that we focus on seeds of righteousness. Um, so we have to be we have to be mindful of every time the enemy tries to sneak something in. Um, we have to pull, we have to pluck that up and make sure that it doesn't take root or that it doesn't choke out the righteous, um, the righteousness, the righteousness that God has put um, placed in our heart, the righteous word that God has planted in our hearts. Um, he's always going to try to distract us. If you ever see, um, for those of um, those of us that grew up around farms or had the pleasure of of seeing of, of being on a, a farm at any point in our lives, um, if you see like the the, um, the donkeys or the horses, they had those blinders on, and I didn't understand that as a as a kid when I moved up north. I didn't get why they had those those blinders on. I need the uh, the, the the person that's controlling that horse. He needed them to stay focused. He didn't want them to be spooked or or get or or or, or lose sight of where they're going while they're trying to plow this ground. Then your lines get all crooked. No, I need you to stay focused. Walk on a straight line. I need you to stay focused. Put some uh, put put some put some blinders on so you can see straight ahead. Walk forward in God. That's what I, that's what we need to do. Amen. Amen. Verse twenty three. A prudent man concealeth knowledge. But the heart of fools proclaimeth foolishness. Amen. Prove man can still have knowledge, but uh, but um the heart of fools, um, um but the heart of a fool, the heart of fools proclaimeth foolishness. Um that a foolish heart publicizes. <laughs> I like the way that uh the uh not the King James, but the uh, uh message Bible said it like this that a foolish heart publicizes stupidity. <laughs> a foolish heart publicizes stupidity. Um, the uh, the message version I call that the hood version. It just it, it says it so um so plain and and so and so good uh, that that um the foolish heart it really just uh, it, it it says everything. It says stuff that, that that should never be spoken out loud. Um, we have seen that in uh, in our local and our federal areas. We've seen that on in our personal lives. We've seen that with some friends and some family members. Um. And some of it we've seen in our own, um, in ourselves. Um, but this is a reminder that what we are on the inside will ultimately be displayed for everyone to see. What we are on the inside will ultimately, ultimately be displayed for everybody to see. Um, man, <laughs> if you reject wisdom, the, um, the thoughts of your foolish heart will eventually go public. Stupidity isn't smart enough to stay hidden. Wow. Stupidity isn't even smart enough to stay hidden. Uh, so we have to make sure that uh, that we are that we are planting good word, good seed in our in our hearts and in our minds so that in those times of trouble. And the trouble is going to come. God, God covers us from he, he, he keeps us from falling. But trouble is going to come. That is, it is not uh, uh, um, an elective in this in this course of kingdom living. That's this is a mandatory course we have to take. Isn't the, the the when the trials and tribulations come, it is it is it is it is that is not an elective. It's going to happen. It's going to come. But we have to make sure that we have something in us. So when the day of trouble comes, that we are able to stand, and stand therefore. In the power and the grace and in the and in the authority of God, Amen, Amen, Amen. I just need y'all to type. I'm type that in there. I will stand. I will stand. Just if you're going to put that, I'm. I am going to stand. Amen. Verse twenty four. The hand of the diligent shall bear rule, but the slothful shall be under tribute. 
We see here again that hard work will be promoted and you will rule over those who are too lazy to work. Tribute is little um, is a little like taxes. Um, again, hard work pays off, and we don't and we can't be slothful. We can't be lazy in our living, in our giving, in our life. Amen. We wanna we wanna make sure that um, the, everything we do as children of God, we represent the King. Amen. Twenty five. Heaviness um, in the heart of man maketh it stoop, but a good word maketh it glad but a good word maketh it glad when a person is worried they do have a tendency to hang their head low Matthew um, 26 37 says um, um, in Matthew 27 um, 26 and 37 we see that um, that even when when Jesus was troubled and facing death on the cross he um, and, and and he and he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began, um, um, I'm sorry, and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. When we are extremely sad or worried, um, we, are, um, um, we are said to have a heavy heart. We are also warned about too much worry. We are told to make no thought for, um, for what we are to say. Um, that God will, will fill our ears and mouth with what we are to say. We are also taught that we should let that we should live one day, one day at a time, and not worry about tomorrow. Someone will um someone who says nice uh, nice things to others makes them um makes them have a glad heart. Amen. Um me and my son actually had this conversation today. He was worried about um starting high school and, and so many other things. And um, and we had a really good conversation um, uh, about um, about worry. And I, um, I said something to him that I've heard for years. And um, and I guess at his young age, it just it, uh, I guess it just hit him like a ton of bricks today. I said, "Listen, worry has has never given anything, but but trouble. Worry will never fix the situation. Tomorrow, tomorrow, uh, tomorrow has enough to worry uh, worry about on its own. You focus on today." Focus on, on, on living today. Today is going to take care of itself. Tomorrow will take care of itself. Don't worry about, about what you can't control. If, if it's something that you can address, do that. If you can't, if you can't um, address it, if you can't fix it, okay. Worrying is not going to fix that. And I believe that as, as believers, we have to take that same approach. We do it so often. Um, and, I, and sometimes I'm guilty. I don't think I worry. I'm concerned. Sometimes, but a uh, um, man. Uh, sometimes uh, um, we have a tendency just to let stuff ring in our minds and rehearse them in our heads. Um, even um, um, even um, if it's not a deliberate thing, unknowing unknowingly, we'll rehearse that thing, and it and it consumes our thoughts. It consumes our day, and we forget to be to be um, thankful in all things. We forget that what well, we forget those verses that we quote so often that I will bless the Lord at all times. Well, what about now? And his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Well, what about now? Even if his praise is in your mouth, let it be in your mind. Even if his word is in your mouth, let it be in your heart. So that when you when you don't have the strength to speak a thing, you can think a thing. When you don't have the, the, the strength to speak a thing, you can think of, you can think on the goodness of Jesus. Every time I think, I thank. Every time I think, if I have a second to think about something bad that's happening, I have that same moment to think about the goodness of God, that I'm able to be in my right mind. Amen. Every time I think, I think. That right there, y'all lucky I can't type that myself because I would type that myself. Amen. That's a good place to say amen. Let's move on. Amen. Verse 26 the righteous is more excellent than his neighbor, but the way of the wicked seduceth them. The righteous is more is is more excellent than his neighbor, but the way of the wicked um, seduceth them. Um, a Christian is not only um, valuable to God, but is valuable to his community as well. They are um, they are good citizens. I thought that was a run on because uh, 
man, <laughs> uh, we are citizens here at Kingdom Life. We are citizens here, so we are good citizens who obeys the law, the laws of the land. This verse could be understood as saying that the righteous guides his friends carefully, unlike the wicked who leads his companions astray. His brothers call him blessed because he loves them as, um, as he loves himself and he helps them every, um, every day in every way he can. He even witnesses to his neighbors about the Lord and helps them to be Christians too. Love, I, I love the question because it challenged me. How many people in your immediate area know who you are? And I'm not talking about your, in your job, in, in your neighborhood. How many people in your neighborhood know that, know that you're a believer? Know that you love God? How many people know, know about your church? It's our duty. We don't have to go door to door um, taking tracks. I mean, we used to do that when we were young. Um, we don't have to do that now. Um, but man, it, I think it's important that people know who we are and not just uh, not just on Sundays. I don't have to ride around with a bumper sticker or a, or, a, or a license plate that says Jesus only. No, let my let my life speak for me. What's what are you going to do when you get cut off in traffic? Do do your hands go up in praise or doesn't or, or do some of the other uh, of, of, of uh, phalanges go up? Now I'm I'm not throwing I'm not throwing stones at nobody because my wife will tell you, um, play with me on the road. I'm I'm not gonna give you the finger. I'm not gonna cuss you. But my God, we are gonna have a staring contest. <laughs> I'm gonna stare at you until Jesus comes back. I'm gonna make sure you feel all these stares. You gonna you gonna see me. <laughs> you hear me? You gonna you gonna see me? I'm gonna make sure. I'm, I don't understand how you could be that silly and you got a license. How? I'm going, Lord Jesus, me and me and uh, road rage. I'm praying, pray, pray, pray for Elder Wesley, y'all. Pray, pray for me, cause Lord knows when we get to that stoplight and I see you, my God, let the Lord guide me and you, because I want you to see how disgusted I am at your driving skills. My Lord, let's move on, for I stay there too long. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. The word is good, and it just it, and it, it's a it, it is a mirror, and it shows you, it shows you you so much. Um, it shows it shows you you so so many ways. And if you can read God's word and not see, uh, and not see yourself, then you are not studying His word effectively. You are not studying His word effectively if you can look if you can read this word and only see somebody else, then you are not studying God's word effectively. God's word will always hit us first it will always hit us first um and, um, it, it says something that um here that i thought was good that um that um this verse can be understood that the righteous guides his friends carefully unlike the wicked who um who leads um his companions astray um and it made me think what are you saying to those around you what do people around you see do they see somebody who is um, who is a um, who is a faithful follower in God? Do they see somebody worth following? Or are your words and or your actions potentially leading somebody astray? We have to make sure that's not us. And if it is, we can turn that around today. We can repent to God and we can turn that around today. They may ask for us to do some crazy things. They may ask for us to be that old version of who we are. But just like the word of God that was preached um, uh, that was preached to us on Sunday, it's time to shift. It's time to shift. We have to go ahead and change and shift gears. We may have it may have been the season for us to be in first gear to to go to get through some muddy and, and some tough and some tough trails. But God says, I've, I've, I've changed, I've trained, I've, I've changed your course. And you have to, you have to, you have to shift out now, out of first gear, and move into another gear because I need you to pick up. I need you to pick up speed. There is pace to your purpose, but I need you to pick up some speed and where you are. I'm trying to get you somewhere, and you are. And, and sometimes we can be too attached to where we were, so so much so that we can't see where where we need to be. But I'm gonna stop there. Amen. The wicked. The wicked are not so. The wicked are constantly getting into all kinds of trouble. They want they want what the neighbors have. 
They also cause the neighbors great problems and are not satisfied with going um, with um, well, um, and not satisfied well, with going bad themselves, but try to lead others into sin as well. You can easily see the difference in these two um, very um, in these two um, different lifestyles. The Christian way brings peace and joy. The wicked way brings hate and destruction. Amen. For the last few moments that we have, Amen. Um, we're going to verse twenty-seven. The slothful man roasteth not um, that which he um, which he took in hunting, but the substance of the diligent man is precious. The slothful man, it, um, the slothful man lacks commitment to make something of his opportunities. My God, we want to take every opportunity that we have, not just to not just to speak in tongues and to lay hands and to do all those things. But there are some things here on earth that God desires for us to do that we need to do to make his name great. And what we can't do is be is, is be slackful or be slothful in those things. When God when God opens up a door for us, it is our job to, to get through that door and represent the kingdom of God effectively. To make sure that when we get there, that, that that same grace that brought us there is that and we walk in that same grace when we're there. We don't let down the standard of God once we get in there. We don't start acting like a hellion when we get there. No, we represent that. We represent God because it's it's He who opened this door. It's it's Him who moves, who lives, moves, and has our being. We 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 have we 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 move, live, and have our being in Him. He lives in us, and we live in Him. And we want to make sure that we represent Him in every way. We don't want to just uh, just allow Him and say, God got me to the door. God opened the door, but no, God kept me when I got in the door. I had enough of him in me that he kept me when I got in. And when it was time and when the season for, for that door to close, he gave, he graced me to leave, leave and not leave things tore up, but leave it better than it was when I got there. That's what we do as citizens of the most high God. We have a standard and we make sure that that standard is felt deep, uh, true and through. Amen. Final verse. Amen. Uh, in the way of right um, of, of righteous, I'm sorry. In the way of righteousness um, is life, and in the pathway there are um, there are there is no death. Being in right standing with God, having righteousness, does bring a fuller life. Being in right standing with God, it brings a fuller life. Amen. I want to stop right there. Um. Proverbs 12 has, like I said, it is, it was as meaty, as heavy. Anytime you have an opportunity to go back and read Proverbs 12, it is good. It is good for your soul. Um, I promise you, I learned so much in preparing for this. And I thank you for taking the time out to join us on tonight. Um, again, we want to give honor to our, um, to the angels of this house, um, Apostle Pearl um, Porter and Dr. Yvette Porter um, for, um, for this opportunity, for allowing us to um to come together and share um, and share the word of God even on even on this um, Facebook live feed. Um now I tell you um I tell you this um Sunday I need to see you in the place. I want to see your face Sunday. If you can register for um for service on Sunday, register to be in the house, be in the house. I know that we feel the presence of God um on um Facebook live and on on YouTube streams. But it is something about proximity. It's something about being in the house and being being in the presence of of not only uh, of not only um um the the saints and the citizens of God, but also just, just also being in the presence of God's house. It is something about being in, in God's house. So if you can make sure that you go um uh, go on go onto the page and register um to be in the house so that you can be accounted for, so we can make sure we have a seat for you. Um, social distancing is still is still in um, is still in effect. Um. Um, if you um, um, whatever your um, if you have your status, if you've been vaccinated or not, we ask that everyone um, be considerate. If you wear your mask while you're in the building, <clears throat> we refrain from hugging and, and, and as much as we can. Um, so um, I, I, I want to see you guys in the building. It, it, it makes my soul happy. It makes it, it makes our apostles happy. It makes the saints happy to see one another, to see how God is blessing each and every last one of you. Amen. Let's pray. Most holy and righteous God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for this time in your word. We thank you for your power and your grace. We thank you for your might. We pray that this word sticks and in, in, to somebody's life. That we know that we are that we are called to be righteous. That we are called to live a holy and righteous life. 
And we're called to live these things and, and walk and, and walk in you. So now, God, let, again, let the meditation of our mouths and the, uh, and, the word, and, um, and the words of our heart be acceptable in your sight. Oh, Lord, our strength and our redeemer, we give you glory. We give you honor and we give you praise. It's in Jesus name we pray. Amen. It's your moment of time. I need you to live the kingdom life. Again, we love you. Thank God.